Praise the Lord. We are again back with our book of Psalms and we are on Psalm 78. You already heard the introduction in Psalm 78a. Now we are on Psalm 78b. And in Psalm 78b, we are going to cover just a few verses. It is so full of, full of teachings that within these few verses only we are going to complete this 10 minutes. It's from verses 12 to 16. And in 12 to 16, I want to cover a few things that happened to the children of Israel on their journey out of Egypt. So it says over here, I told you in the introduction, that the psalm was written by Asaph, who was a collector. And he was also a song leader. He was a choir leader in the time of King David and King Solomon. And his generation were always chosen for worship service in their temple at that time. And the same person has written the psalm. Asaph has written the psalm. So we come now to verses 12 to 16, Psalm 78b. And it says over here, Marvelous things he did in the sight of their fathers. God did marvelous things, such outstanding miracles, it has never been heard of in any other way. No nation ever witnessed miracles like what the people of Israel went through. When God was delivering the people of Israel out of Egypt, some say 25 to 30 lakhs people were coming out of Egypt. Pharaoh and his people, they did, they did not want the Egyptians, the Israelites to leave. They didn't want them to leave. And then God had to settle them. God had to talk to them. God had to deal with Pharaoh. And God had to, when he was dealing with Pharaoh, he had to do signs and wonders. And he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And yet, he was not allowing the children of Israel to go. And God multiplied the signs and wonders. And then brought the children of Israel out. So he says over here, the psalmist says, He says, marvelous things he did in the sight of their father. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. If you want to know what God did in Egypt to deliver the people of Israel, you can go to the book of Exodus, chapter 7 to chapter 12. Chapter 7 to chapter 12, you can read through what all God did in the land of Egypt. How he brought Moses and how he went to before Pharaoh, that is in another portion we will cover that. But now we come to the Red Sea crossing. When the people of Israel came out of Egypt and when they started moving, God took them through the desert. God said, if I take them through some other country, there will be war. And as soon as they see war, immediately they will get afraid and they will want to return back. God knows the mentality of man. Man is ready to complain. Man is so weak and so afraid. Any little thing negative means the, the heart fails. They want to go back. They want to return. They forget what has happened. How they came out, they forget. So in the same way, we, when you come to the psalm, they brought him through the desert. And then when they came up right to the Red Sea, the Red Sea was in the front. And behind, when they turned and seen, Pharaoh with his army with 600 chariots were coming behind them. And when the children of Israel saw, looked back, turned and they looked back, they saw these 600 chariots coming. They were, the Bible says they were so afraid. So afraid means very afraid. When they became very afraid, you know, God is far out. It's very difficult to touch God. Pastors and leaders are very close by. <laughs> Moses was there. So it is easier to hold the neck of Moses because you can't hold the neck of God. God is so high. So they went against Moses and they were ready to stone him. You think, you fellow, you think that you think that you we want didn't want to come out of Egypt? You didn't want to come out of Egypt, but you told us come out of Egypt. We told you that. We are all right over there. We'll be all right over there. There are no graves over there. You want us to come here and be buried. That means they're talking about death. They're talking about being buried. They're talking about dying. When God had delivered them and given them life, brought them out of slavery, now they're talking about death. They're talking about dying. And when they're talking about dying, Moses told them something. He said over there, he said, stand still. He was telling them not to run away. Stand still and see the miracle of God. See the hand of God. Stand still. 
you know, it is very difficult to stand still when danger is approaching. When the army of Peru is coming, what do you think these 25 plus lakh people must have been doing? They were looking now which side to run. In the front is the sea, whether to go to the left or whether to go to the right. That is what normally we do. Run for your life. So he knew that they will also do that. So he told them, don't run. Stand still and see the hand of the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord that he will do right now before you. And you know what happened at that time? It says over here, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the water stand up like a heap. That means he made the water into two walls at the side. And then he let the people go through on dry land. That is the miracle that God did. When God said stand still, that means don't run. Wait. God is there for you. And then we know what will happen. The pillar of cloud and fire that was going before them came at the back and stood before Pharaoh and his army and the Israelites and separated them. And when it stood before them, in between them and separated them, we see that the children of Israel had time to move on. They could not come. God would not allow Pharaoh and his army to come, to come in. They were kept over there. And there was darkness that side and there was light this side. By the time God told Moses, why are you crying out to me? Stretch out the rod that is in your hand. And when Moses stretched out his rod across the sea, the sea parted. I remember when I was small, the film of the Ten Commandments came out. It was a beautiful, beautiful film. And the producer got also some awards for that film. So I went to see that film in Calcutta. The hall would be packed. For some months the film was running in that hall. And the hall would be packed. And the moment they come to this portion, where Moses is standing before the sea, and when he raises up the rod across the sea and the sea starts parting, you could see literally almost that it, it was beautifully filmed. You could see the water parting and it became like two walls. And the people in the hall used to cheer and shout. When I went there, the people were shouting. All types of religious people, all kinds of religion people were there. They were there of a different type of uh, religion. But when they came and saw the film, they would stay for this parting of the sea. The sea would part and the water would become walls, beautifully filmed. Then the people of Israel went through. You know, when the people of Israel went through, almost more than half the hall gets cleared after that. More than half the cinema hall gets empty after that scene. People were coming specially to see this scene. How God was parting the sea and it was a flim, it is a flim, but so beautifully flim, you cannot imagine. Uh, so that is what happened over here. In reality, it is not a flim over here. Over here, it is really God doing for his people. And he led them through. And it says here, in the daytime, he led them with a cloud. And at the night, a light of, of, of fire, of, a cloud of fire, a pillar of fire by day and a pillar of fire by night. Praise the Lord. That is how the cloud was there before them to give them shade during the day. And during the night it would give them light. You know they had no load shedding. We have, last night we had the light so many times going on and off, on and off, on and off. It was, the fan was going off and coming on again, going off and coming on. Repeatedly. Here they had no load shedding, although they were in the, in the wilderness. They had no, no uh, what should you say, uh, no power supply there, nothing. But they had no need of lighting candles also. The pillar of fire over them was giving them light during the night also. Night was day for them also. And during the day, the cloud of uh, the cloud that was above them, the pillar of cloud, it would give them shade from the scorching sun. In the desert, it is very hot. Very hot during the day and very cold during the night. So they had AC in that time, 3000 years ago, the people of Israel had AC in the, in the wilderness. In the daytime when it's very hot, the pillar of cloud was over them, giving them shade and not allowing the sun's heat to scorch them. And in the night time, when they had the pillar of fire, instead of the cold desert wind, they would have the heater on, the cloud of fire above them. So God was balancing even the weather for them. In spite of all this, that is what he says here, in spite of God's 
hand in, the, in their life, in spite of all the miracles that they were see, seeing, they, they were still rebellious against God. So that is what the psalmist says here. He, he gave them drink in abundance. He also brought streams out of the rock and caused water to run down. Even he brought water out of the rock and gave them. In the wilderness where there's no water, no rivers, nothing to drink, they didn't have water to drink. He brought rivers of water out of, out of the rock. He told Moses, speak to that rock. At one time he says, smite the rock. When he smote the rock, water came out like a river. It is not like a little tap water because 25 lakhs people have to drink. So it came out like a river gushing from a rock. From a dry rock in the dry wilderness, water came out like a river. And the people of Israel, they all could drink from that water. That is all the miracles that God did. And yet the people were rebellious. Yet the people, when the, something little negative happened, little something went wrong, they would complain and go against God. So that is what the psalmist was trying to tell us. He says, so much the Lord did. So much the Lord did. Yet the people were so faithless. Yet they were so cold. Yet they were so rebellious. Always grumbling. That is why God says, this is, these are a stiff-necked people. How, how are we with the Lord today? How is our walk with the Lord? When everything is okay, then it's alright. We can praise the Lord, we can worship the Lord. When things start going wrong, how are we? So, don't forget what the Lord has already done. Always remember the goodness of the Lord. The Lord's mercy is new every morning. His mercies fail not. So therefore we must thank the Lord. And this psalm reminds us that what he did for Israel, he's doing more for us today. So we must remember to the Lord when to worship him. Not only in good times, also in bad times. Not only when things are going well, also in other times also. We must learn to praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you with the psalm.